Sinclair Oil Corporation was famous for its dinosaur mascot, Dino. By the 1960s, the gentle giant was displayed in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and at gas stations across the country. While the massive herbivore won over the American public, the minority stockholders of Sinclair's Venezuelan subsidiary likely saw a colossal predator. Frank Levine was a minority stockholder of Sinclair Oil's subsidiary, Sinclair Venezuelan Oil Company, also called Sinven for short. Sinclair Oil was Sinven's parent company. By the late 1960s, Sinclair Oil controlled Sinven's board of directors and owned 97% of Sinven's stock. Sinclair owned other subsidiaries too, including Sinclair International Oil Company, which we'll call International Oil. Between 1960 and 1966, Sinclair made three business decisions for Sinven. First, Sinclair caused Sinven to pay out $108 million in dividends, an amount in excess of Sinven's earnings. Second, while Sinclair expanded internationally, it gave the development opportunities to subsidiaries other than Sinven. Third, Sinclair caused Sinven to sign a contract with International Oil, which International Oil then breached. In 1969, Levine brought a derivative action, which is a form of lawsuit that allows stockholders to sue on behalf of a corporation if the corporation opts not to sue for itself. Levine alleged that Sinclair breached its fiduciary duties to Sinven. In other words, the parent company failed to show the highest care for its subsidiary's minority stockholders. Delaware's Court of Chancery, which has jurisdiction over corporate equity issues, evaluated the fairness of Sinclair's decisions using the intrinsic fairness standard. Under that standard, Sinclair had the burden to prove that the transactions were highly fair. The court declined to use the business judgment rule. The business judgment rule better protects board of directors' decisions from judicial scrutiny, allowing courts to interfere only if there is, quote, gross and palpable overreaching, unquote. The court found Sinclair didn't meet its burden under the intrinsic fairness standard and ordered it to pay damages. Sinclair then appealed to the Supreme Court of Delaware. 